we're going into a meeting. Uh, what's it? What's it all about? This meeting is one of the public participation meetings of the Community Standards District. It's somewhat unusual because it includes the unit operator. Hopefully tonight it will include Dogger, the Division of Oil, Gas and Geothermal Resources and the Regional Planning Department of the County of Los Angeles. This is quite unusual because in most places you never see the operators. You never see Dogger. So might say this is one of the few places in the entire state of California where the public can actually go and find out what's going on. What is the subject of this meeting? I think the meeting is the subject of the meeting is fracking. Mm -hmm. Using fracking technology for oil exploration and extraction or natural gas. That's why I, I was here because I, I read about that and I want to know what do we know why, why is there a discussion about that? I heard the word fracking, it sounds like it's something bad. What is it? What? You, you want me to explain the process? My daughter lives in this neighborhood and I, and I heard that it it's in danger of maybe poisoning their water or something. There, there's lots of um, anecdotal evidence and scientific evidence that suggests that fracking technology can contaminate groundwater and cause uh, seismic activity, earthquakes even, can trigger earthquakes. Uh, lots of uh, concerns nationwide with regard to that. Little is known of it specifically in California. The public communities in California don't know much about it, but they're learning rapidly about it. everybody for being here tonight at our monthly CAP meeting. Tonight's meeting is, as I said, going to be a, a special meeting and our, our focus is going to be on an overview of the fracking study that PXP and its outside expert are doing and then on a report by Dogger. After each of those sessions we will have questions um, and as I said we may need to cut off the questions so that we get to every, you know, both of those important parts. Any of you who've been here before know we have a very strict ending time of 9 o'clock. The people who work in this facility need to go home to their families, and so we have a two-hour limit, and we have to leave at 9 o'clock. For that reason, uh, we may have to be uh, cutting people off during the question periods because we want to make sure that we get to both the uh, PXP people in the fracking study and to the dogger people who have come down to come to this meeting. Then why did you make the meeting so short? Mr. Meeting, Camarillo, how are you? Our meeting is always two hours and we're not going to uh, get through it any faster if we have uh, people no, shouting no, out from the audience, business. so if we can get going. Uh, I'm John Martini, I'm with uh, Plains Exploration and Production Company. I'm in the EHS and Government Affairs Group. And what we uh, wanted to do here this evening is give you a build on the comments that uh, Carly just made, give you a few background comments about uh, uh, why we're doing a study, uh, and uh, give you an overview of the two hydraulic fracturing jobs conducted at the field that are part of the study. I apologize given the setup of the room. Some of you will I'll have my back to you. Uh, at some point, I'll try to talk as loudly as possible uh, for the folks out in uh, the hallway. Why is there a hydraulic fracturing study being done at the Inglewood oil field? Well, as a result of the uh, settlement agreement reached uh, in 2011 between PXP, LA County, and the various uh, parties to the lawsuit, one of the conditions was that a study on the impacts and the feasibility of hydraulic fracturing within the confines of the field be conducted. Sure. Uh, the, Could you please define fracturing? For I'm going to get to that, sir. Yes, sir. I will, okay. absolutely. Absolutely, no, it's, 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 uh, it's a it's spot on uh, question. We'll get to that in the next slide. So what is hydraulic fracturing? Here are four different definitions of the term of hydraulic fracturing. The state of New York recently adopted some new regulations and I'll quote from there, it's, uh, they define it as the pumping of a fluid 
with profit to create and maintain fractures as a stimulation method. All wells are fractured or a quarter? How many, what percentage approximately uh, um, are fractured? Half? That's, well, that's all. a great question. I want to defer if we can to get through all the presentation that you can ask the consultant because a broader policy statement touching on that is in fact going to be touched on in the study. But the short answer to your question is increasingly with across the country as you look to the bulk of the activity happening in these tight shale plays that have been the focus of this media attention, certainly all of those need to be. So overall in the United States, I think you're probably making a very fair, fair assessment. We, we can get the accurate thought. What's, what's the California regulatory definition of fracturing? Well, we don't have one now. The Division of Oil and Gas will be here. There is legislation pending right now, uh, AB 591, that the legislature is, is debating, and they have their own uh, definition in there. But we do have the Division of Oil and Gas. They'll be speaking here this evening if we can get you to... Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, yeah. I just have one question. Yeah, yeah. Because there's all these euphemisms. What is a propent and what is the, the fracking material? What is that? Is it a chemical that's added to the water to loosen things up? And then what does it do to our groundwater? That's propent is great. It's a very good question. I probably would like to defer to Dr. Torme if I can on that. Okay. Very good question. The short answer is the propent is generally a sand to keep to prop open the fractures. The fluid is a mixture of a bunch of stuff, including chemicals. And radioactive uh, particles. Uh, well, not quite. No. There, there's, and that's. One of the things about, there are radioactive tractors used in the oil and gas process. It's a different type of process, not relative to, to yeah. hydraulic fracturing. And that's one of the very confusing parts of this discussion. As there's been a lot of media attention about the practice of hydraulic fracturing, people have moved to educate themselves. And for non-oil and gas professionals, it's very easy to, you know, and I, I come across it very often, to pick oil and gas production process that's unrelated to hydraulic fracturing. And there's a tendency for people to lump them all into one basket. There's a lot of different practices in the oil and gas process when it comes to gathering oil and gas. The use of radioactive tracers in certain instances, there is a reason for that. Not hydraulic fracturing. Again, question for Dr. Torme. Yes, ma'am. Hi. I'm not going to ask you what chemicals you use because it's going to be on the website. Yes, but I am curious how many different chemicals you use. On the website. You, can, you don't have a number in your I, I've got the handout with me, but I mean, it is on the website. I'm not trying to be flippant. I want to emphasize that in the two frack jobs of interest to this community that were done here in the Inglewood oil field, all of the chemicals listed and the concentration in which those chemicals were used can be found at frackfocus.org. Before I turn it over to Dr. Torme, uh, we were going to show a video in the interest of time. I think we'll just get right into to, uh, Dr. Torme's presentation. I've been hired as the independent expert to conduct the frac study. And um, one thing I want to emphasize is that it's not just me doing all of this after, as John said, after I'm complete with the draft of the study, it will go to an independent peer reviewer who will review it if he finds any deficiencies or wants things emphasized in the discussion, any of his comments, then those would come back. Sorry then those would come back to, to be addressed. And then uh, another thing is that I'm not doing everything all by myself. So as you'll see in this presentation, there's a lot of monitoring that was going on during the fractures, uh, the frac jobs themselves. And so I'll be bringing that together and using it to interpret the results. So there's a host of studies that I'm bringing together. I'm not doing everything all by myself. Did your company pull a permit for this? And how is it that we're just finding out about this now? We're not, a lot of us are not actually involved in any of those, those acronyms that are with the ND people, those people. We didn't know. Yeah. So did you guys pull a permit? And were we supposed to know? Or is it because it's commerce, you guys get the first call, and then you can tell us after, hey, we did this. Yeah. How does that work? Well, um, I don't think you mean me. Well, no, of course, no, of course not. Euphemistically, you know, you're the, you're standing there. It's like, you know, your company, let's just say that. Yes, yeah. Permits, permits for the workovers of the wells were pulled from the Division of Oil and Gas. The community advisory panel was advised of both frack jobs before they were completed. Obviously, the public in general, if you're not plugged into what's happening at the cap proceedings, you weren't advised. But there was public notice in advance. We did pull the appropriate permits to do the, uh, the work over activity on the individual. And so you say CAP is the, is the organization the that was... The Community Advisory Panel is the acronym. I see. Right now. If I can just ask again, 
hold your questions until the end. There are a lot of people here. A lot of people have questions. I don't want only the four people who are willing to shout them out in the middle to be able to have their questions asked. So let's wait till the end. And we don't know what you're talking about. Sorry. The potential environmental effects of the chemicals that are used as part of the hydraulic fracturing fluids. Uh, the potential for any vibrations or induced seismicity as a result of the hydraulic fracturing. Uh, the potential for migration of natural gas, of methane in the subsurface as a result of hydraulic fracturing. And then air emissions in general, both from equipment and from any loss of methane from produced waters uh, that might occur as a result of this process. So these are the, the major issues that have been raised in the context of hydraulic fracturing in, in shale gases. And these will be described thoroughly in the fracturing report. So that involves collecting groundwater samples from different depths above the zones that were subject to fracture. So there is no soil gas testing? Um, no. And that would be because? Well, and if I can, that's one of the purposes of the meeting here tonight is to take suggestions for additional topics. So if you want to formally nominate soil gas testing as a topic, that's the purpose of the meeting here this evening. Well, good. I'd like to bring it up because it's one of the basics testing that needs to be done to monitor. Even the city of LA talks about it for landfills needing to monitor for and having baseline, which is being discussed across the United States, um, and, and testing. So I'm surprised you don't have it. You will be testing for the gas within the water column, yeah. and it will be sent to a, an in-house laboratory for analysis that would include um, isotopic analysis and so on. So we'll be looking at the dissolved concentration of the methane in an independent laboratory, not All gases besides just methane, but yes. All the potential VOCs, hydrogen sulfide, yes. any potential chemicals that could come from a fracked fluid. Right. So those are dissolved. But then the, uh, I don't know, what, the way you asked your question made me think you knew about that. Yes. So we'll be looking at dissolved uh, gases, primarily methane. And then we'll be doing uh, isotopic analysis of carbon and hydrogen to address the sources. And then in the dissolved, Days. We'll be looking at the VOCs, the foliar uh, hydrocarbons, etc. Um, as a before and after, because as I understand it, there is no real basis. They speak all jargon. It's hard to understand. You're being told jargon. Blah, 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 blah. We don't know what we're listening to. Maybe you get it, but we don't. I totally agree. Thank you. Thank you for just. Being very patient. Patience has nothing to do with it. Making it clear to the layman is all we're asking. That's all. In the meantime, let, to, to move this along, I'm going to, if you could raise your hand if you need a card we're, to we'll write down questions. To pass out the card. Yeah, um, if you just. If you have topics that you would like addressed, such as her, her topics. And you get all your, um, your specs in a row. Are you only going to be doing your testing within the boundaries of the Inglewood oil field, or will you go further out where we actually live? The testing that I was uh, that I was describing here would be done within the boundaries of the field, in proximity to where the actual fracturing is occurring. And if you if you if some of this stuff is going to be dealing with uh, groundwater, you know we have two large um, water systems right over here, one on Innadale and one on um, Verdun, and um, they're aquifers. They come right from the from just beneath us. So if you're going to be doing work within that, that was the reason why I asked you if it was going to be horizontal or vertical. All right. Yes, if you're, so, if it, so if it seeps out, how are we going to know if you don't go past the gate? So this, that's right, I remember that, uh, that question. And these, these studies were both done on vertical wells as kind of a pilot test to see how the formation responds and you know, does it respond according to prediction. So these were vertical wells, not the, the horizontal wells. And so the, the testing is going to be in the vicinity of where the actual hydraulic fracturing occurred. For groundwater, that there is a, a well, a monitor well array, so like nine different wells around the field yes. for testing groundwater. And those are all part of that the That will be off-site, basically. You'll get to go across the street, not just be here. 
Uh, no, these are distributed around the, the oil field itself. They're on the boundaries, but not off-site. Because no. we have water that's just over there, do you think that we can include that in your, in your uh, results? That's right. Our drinking water is right over there. I mean, it's right over there, and we have two giant, you know, hold, uh, holding tanks. They're right there. When you are conducting the measurements near where the fracturing is occurring, that's where the, <coughs> the impact would be greatest. So I, I would just like to say that your empirical information is lost on us because we would like to believe you. We like you. But you know what? <laughs> you did this fracking without it. You told a couple of people. You know, today I think people heard it on NPR. And we said, hey, it's our neighborhood. I think we'll show up. So, you know, I would like to believe you, but maybe not. And I think that perhaps, perhaps it would be nice because we all are here and we drink that water. That's us right there. And that's just across the street. We would, I would like to respectfully request that you test a couple of miles this way and a couple of miles that way. Oil, oil, big oil has lots of money. Hook us up with the information, please. Well, you, you know, he's an expert, so he's well aware that, that gas can hopscotch through and use any number of conduits to the surface, so your request is extremely valid, and you know that. Would you please do right. that for us? Uh, really hopscotch? No. It's, really? Yeah, Are you uh, on, on, on record now as saying that gas does not hopscotch? Right. 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 Online, the question will be shown to reflect on the card. Yes, we would like to see everyone else's question, not only so that we don't repeat it, but also that we know that these things are being answered. Solidate the questions and the ones that are similar. We'll try to keep them together, but we'll attempt to do that. But that's why we need the cutoff because, um, you know, otherwise we'll run out of time. to have a follow-up meeting, so tonight they can present, and at the follow-up we can discuss it civilly with one another. And one more thing, ladies and white, this issue of fracking is new. There have been a lot of community meetings and discussions about it, and we were promised mm -hmm. that fracking will not happen here. Mm -hmm. At the Ladera Heights Civic Association meeting, the county supervisor's representative said, when Citizens Coalition for a Safe Community asked about it, this was when the lawsuits were going on, we were told fracking will not happen here. Yes, it yeah. is happening. It's large enough so that everybody yes. can be in and sit down. Obviously, there's a lot of interest, and this doesn't work. The question that's important for everybody is why tomorrow at end of business day for questions? What, what's the deadline with tomorrow? The, the settlement agreement requires the fracking study to be completed within a certain timeline. Mm -hmm. And if, if the timeline continues to be open for people to ask questions as to what the fracking study needs to contain, we're going to have, the, the timing is going to be exceeded for the settle, beyond the settlement. What is the timeline? Yeah. What is, what is the date? It's one, it's one year. July 15, 2012, sir. According to the settlement, we have to have the study complete. There's a lot of data. So you're saying tomorrow is the last day for community members it, to get their questions? It's mainly to, to put into, to consider for the scope of the study. You can ask any, you can, you can keep sending us questions in, in the planning department, just general, like facts, like what, what is this or what is that kind of definitions to kind of educate the community. And we'll try to, you know, work on creating answers for that. But in terms of for the study to get questions that will go into the scope of the study, that's why the cutoff. I'm here for a long time and I want to make sure that we have plenty of time for them to tell us what the state is doing in this area and we'll if we have time we'll come back to, to Daniel.